You are welcome to Dave Tut Academy, where we are devoted to building excellence in students and the STEM subjects. In our video today, we are going to be looking at the proficiency of using the scientific calculator to solve exponential equations. So, you, if you are out there and you are not yet subscribed to the channel, I don't know what you are waiting for. Resources are being pushed out that are going to help build that academic excellence in you. So, just go ahead, click on the subscribe icon, click on the notification bell so that you can have access to all of our videos once we upload them and with that let's head over to our video for today so in this question we are going to be solving for y in this particular equation that we are giving and that equation if 1 over 5 raised to the power minus y is equal to 25 multiplied by 5 raised to the power 4 minus 2y we have to find the value of y as a rule of thumb x is the variable that the calculator perfectly understands and instead of y, I'm going to be using x. Then I'm going to be solving all of this. First, we have fraction here. So I'm going to press the fraction button. 1 as the numerator. Then at the denominator, we have 5 raised to power minus. This is the minus button. Then I want to use x as a variable. So I will use alpha close bracket. That is x. Then to use the equality sign, I will go out of that power then go out of the denominator and what i want to press is the equality sign not the equal to if i press this it will try and solve for this but that's not what i want i want to continue inputting the questions as seen on the board so i'm going to press alpha cac and you can see alpha is in red this equality sign is in red i'm pressing alpha cac we put up that equality sign so that is equal to 25 then open bracket 5 raised to power 4 minus 2y but i'm using x so i use alpha close bracket for x and i can go out of the power and close the bracket always check to see if what you have been put into the calculator is exactly what was given in the question and seeing that that is as given i can now say i want to solve for x and to solve for x this is solve written in gray color to activate that i need to press shift calc and they said it wants to solve for x it wants to use 9 as the initial value i don't want it to use 9 i always want it to use 0 because look at the options we are giving we have some negative values we have some positive values so starting is iteration process from 0 it can go maybe towards the positive number line or towards the negative number line so I want 0 as initial value, I will press equal to, and here the calculator is telling me that the correct answer is 2. So, option B is the correct solution to this particular question. Okay, let's check out another question. So, we have this equation, and in this equation we are being told that 2 raised to power 3y plus 2 minus 7 multiplied by 2 raised to power 2y plus 2. Then minus 31 multiplied by 2y minus 8 is equal to 0. This is a theory question paper. And to solve it, what you are actually do is you said let p be equals to 2 raised to power y. And then you solve for the question and, and co. Let 2 raised to power y. Let it be p. So since we want our 2 raised to power y to be p, we need to look around for all the case scenarios in which we are seeing 2 raised to power y. And looking at this by rules of indices, we know that um, a raised to power m plus n is actually a raised to power m multiplied by a raised to power n. So in this first one, that means what we're having is 2 raised to power 3y multiplied by 2 raised to power 2. And the same argument goes for this other case here. So we have 2 raised to power 2y then multiply by 2 raised to the power 2 minus 31 multiply by 2 raised to the power y minus 8 is equal to 0 okay so if that is the case we can now say this is the same as having we have p raised to the power 3 2 raised to the power 2 is 4 okay minus here yeah, this is 2 raised to the power 2 4 4 times 7 is 28 okay so we have 2 raised to the power 2y. That is 2 raised to the power y is p. Then raised to the power 2. So we have that is 28p raised to the power 2 minus 
31 2 raised to the power y is p minus 8 is equal to 0. Okay, so now we are we are having this as a polynomial. This is a polynomial. So now this is a polynomial equation that we can try and solve with the calculator. And for me to actually solve this, I can ask the calculator to go to the calculation mode. So I can press mode 5. It's going to be the equation mode that will help us to solve this particular type of question. So I'm pressing 5. And looking at this, I'm having that the equation is of degree 3. And option 4 is the one corresponding to degree 3, just like we have in the question. So I'm pressing option 4. And then I need to input the coefficient of the variable we are looking for. Like in the first case, the coefficient of the degree 3 of the variable, that's 4. I'll press equal to, then for degree 2, that is minus 28. Don't make the mistake of putting 28. It's minus 28, okay? And then, next is minus 31, and then minus 8, okay? So I can press equal to to input that and then to solve for it I will press my equal to so one of the roots is 8 the other root is minus 1 over 2 now those are the two roots that the calculator is giving us meaning that one of these roots x1 is 8 x2 is minus 1 over 2 one of them is being repeated and sincerely I've solved this question before in solving for the 2018 past question of further mathematics, you can check out this particular um, solution in which I just solved with the normal calculation method without using calculator. We just solved it out, we got our hands dirty, solved everything. Just check out that video and you will see. So I know that minus two is a root that is occurring twice. Okay, so um, moving forward, I can say for this equation, p is eight or P is minus 1 over 2. So, we need to now move forward. Nobody gave us P originally. What we are giving is Y. And you know we have said 2Y should be P. So, if you are to use that now, I can just say that means that 2 raised to the power Y is 8. But 8 I can also express as 2 raised to the particular power. I know that power is 3 because 2 times 2 times 2. 2 in 3 places. That is it. So, I can say... 2 raised to the power y is 2 raised to the power 3. Since the base are equal, definitely the power must be equal. So y is equal to 3. Okay? Now, in this other case, p is equal to minus 1 over 2. is not going to give us a real root. Okay? We can try and solve this particular question. What we are going to have is 2 raised to the power y is equal to minus 1 over 2. And if you want to solve this, and um, the best way is to use the logarithmic transformation and to use that logarithmic transformation that means you have these two will come as the base so what we are going to have is something like log to base 2 that is these two okay of minus 1 over 2 is equal to y and you want to solve for that let me just show you if i go back to my computer mode i can say log to base 2 of minus um, the fraction 1 over 2 i can say is equal to what see it's a mathematical error and um, maybe beyond the scope of this but here we can say yeah y has no real root has no real root and you know this is occurring twice so for this y we have no real root but for the other p is equal to 8 you can solve y is equal to 3 now i'm showing this for you to see the various methods in which you can employ the use of a calculator to solve this type of question so in that case i'm not going to look at the whole of this question and solve directly with the calculator and you will see the value of knowing how to input your initial value how it can come into play so so let me go to my computer mode and try and input this particular equation directly into the calculator to see if I'm going to get 
the solution directly instead of all these equivalent tasks that I just went through. So I'm going to input 2 raised to power 3x plus 2 and I go out of the power minus 7 open bracket 2 raised to power 2x 2x plus 2 and I go out of that power and I close the bracket minus 31 multiplied by 2 raised to power x go out of the power and close the bracket minus 8 is equal to 0 as a rule of thumb always check to ensure that you didn't put any wrong value so knowing that I got all my values correct I can now say I want to solve for x and to do that I press shift calc now this is where the understanding of what your initial value should be like understanding it is going to help you a lot if I'm to use zero as initial value and I'm press equal to knowing that my answer is actually um, three positive three if I just press equal to the calculator is going to be taking quite some time you can see it's taking it's doing an iteration as I used to explain and it's taking time to solve and it's saying that it cannot solve using zero as initial value okay let me show you something I want to use a negative number as initial value so I say shift calc I want to solve for x let's say I'm using minus 5 then again the calculator is taking time trying to solve for this particular question that I just input into it and again it's saying it can't solve now because I know that my answer is 3 which is a positive value let me take a number greater than 3 so I will say let me use 7 okay okay no no not like that I will say shift calc and I want to use 7 as the initial value for the iteration process that the calculator is going to go through to try and solve this question so I press the equal to sign and look at this the calculator the same calculator is giving me the answer to be x is equal to 3 why because I use the correct initial value so is where understanding the process of algorithm by which the calculator uses to solve this question understanding it is going to be quite useful for you as a student you don't just use zero as initial value in all the cases one more question before we go and we'll call it a day okay so yeah now last question for the day we are to solve for x in this question and looking at the options we know that we are going to have two answers and as a rule of thumb i'm going to pick my initial value lower than the lowest value and higher than the highest value of the solutions that we are given so let's just directly put in our question here on the fly so we have 3 raised to power 2x okay we can go out of the power minus 3 raised to power 3 raised to power x plus 2 then I can go out of that power to input the equality sign is equal to 3 raised to power x plus 1 and go out of that power then minus 27 so i need to check do i get everything correct yes i can say shift calc so for us using the initial value of zero no i don't want zero i want a number that is lower than the least option we are giving now the least option is here is minus two minus two is the least value for the answers we are giving so i want to use say minus five so as a calculator to solve for that and if you do the iteration, taking its time from minus 5 and trying to solve. Okay, it's saying that, okay, the lower value is 1, all right. Then I still have one more answer to get. I know 1, meaning that it's either A, B, or C that is my correct answer. But I still need to get the other value. So I'll say I to also solve again. So shift calc again. Then I want to use, let's say, 4, which is higher than the highest correct option that I have here. So I can press equal to, and you can see. Now, the calculator is giving me two answers based on the initial value I'm inputting into it. And that is why you really need to understand the concept of the iteration of the calculator and the initial value that you need to pick. 
being one and two to be the answer means that option B is the correct option, but I couldn't have been able to get that if I don't know how to use my correct initial value. And with that, we have come to the end of the video for today. But I want you to have your assignment. So here is your assignment that I want you to also lay your hands upon. Try and see how best you can solve for exponential equations in the case of which you are particularly going to be involving um, two or more answers and you will need to put in your correct initial value. We hope this video has been quite useful for you to help you build that proficiency that you are looking for. And if you find it useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, tell your friends, tell your loved ones, tell your younger ones. Let's build academic excellence together in students and we know that aim can be achieved. It's day to academy and until next time, God bless you.